Okay, what is going on guys? This is Quadbro FPV here and today I'm going to be doing a little experiment with my long range 7 inch rig. So this is my FR7 and I've had it for about 5 months and I built it for super long range missions and I've uh, made some lithium ion packs for it. And it's been really fun to fly. Um, I'm really enjoying it just being able to um, explore around and then having a GPS on it just to have that safety net um, in case I get behind a mountain or something. And I'm running it on iNav by the way just for that uh, extra security of return to home because iNav has a lot better return to home than uh, Betaflight's GPS Rescue which I've found to not be very reliable for me. Um, anyways, I'm going to be doing an experiment today. So um, typically I've been running um, these two 3,000 milliamp hour um, uh, lithium ion packs in parallel, which gets me 6,000 milliamp hours. So I can fly for maybe about 15 to 20 minutes, going about 45 to 55 miles an hour. Um, but really, the more important factor to me is distance. And out of these packs, with um, I think with the GoPro, I've been able to squeeze about 12 miles. Um, easily um, 13 at the most is what I've squeezed I think it was without the GoPro but anyways um, before that I did have this 4000 milliamp hour um, uh, eight, uh, not 18650 it's a 21700 cell these other two are 18650 so I had the idea of wiring all three together with this super janky looking um, um, parallel connector that I put together so this will get me about 10,000 milliamp hours um, so I'm thinking maybe about 25 30 minutes of flight time but once again the most important factor to me is distance I just want to be able to get out as far as I can the time doesn't matter I just want to be able to get get it as far as I can so I'm gonna um, try this experiment with you guys today I haven't tried it before um, I'm gonna load it up with a GoPro it's a pretty heavy quad. I would say it's close to 16, 1700 grams how it is right now. I don't have a scale, so I don't know. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to fly a circle all the way around the edge of our property here. And uh, I won't have any uh, DVR footage. Um, I'm just going to record off the GoPro and edit in a timer. And I'll just uh, talk over it and I'll let you know what my OSD says. All right, guys, so change of plans. I am going to be using the DVR footage um, just so you guys can uh, see concrete proof of uh, distance and um, speed and flight time and all that. I've got it plugged up over here, um, ready to take off. It's arming. So I'm going to go ahead and start the DVR recording, and I'll do my best post-processing to get it synced up. recording with the blinking light okay seem to be recording so let's doesn't sound very good. I'm not sure if I should keep flying this or not with that little oscillation. It seemed like it just went away. But I'm just going to keep flying in a circle. I'm having to hold a little bit more throttle than normal. I do have a little bit of a wind moving west, I believe. So, I'll have to fight the wind. So this is kind of worst case scenario. It's only about 30 degrees out here. And, um, windy. So we're still at 3.75 volts. And I'm going to discharge all the way down to about 2.6. It's normally what I do. 
again I'm just going to keep flying the same circle I'm not sure what kind of flight time I'm going to get out of it yeah I'm wondering that little oscillation I'm wondering if it just uh, needed to uh, get comfortable with the extra weight I think the filters just had to dial in themselves I don't know if, if the filters work that way on the INAV but um, I can recall um, flying on beta flight or emu flight um, the, the dynamic filters just always have to uh, dial themselves in for a few seconds alright guys so we've hit five miles so far and um, um, this is typically when I uh, begin thinking about turning around um, on just my regular um, two lithium ions, the two 18650s I normally run. And so far we've been flying for seven minutes and the, the current reading isn't really accurate for the uh, milliamp hour reading. I don't believe it's accurate. Uh, neither is the current reading, but um, it's just kind of for reference point. I think it's it could be close to double what I'm at, what it's actually showing, but I mean you can see we're only at about 3.58 volts per cell, which is pretty good. Uh, normally, I think um, I would be around 3.35 or 3.4 volts per cell um, you know, if I was beginning to turn around. Um, and then another thing that. Just, just a quick tip. Um, if you're flying long range, always fly into the wind. So that way, as you're coming back, the wind will just give you an, a nice ride home. So you may be able to get further than what um, your battery is capable of. Um, last time I flew long range, I, uh, I had a bit of a crosswind. And that was kind of hindering me from getting back. And it was actually causing me to fail safe. Um, I'm going to do a little low pass here. Uh, it still sounds like it's oscillating a little bit. But, um, yeah, I barely made it home from a, what would be a total of a 12 mile flight. Um, when I flew about five and a half miles out, um, maybe just five, I'm not really sure, but since it kept trying to return to home, um, from the wind blowing me behind mountains or maybe even behind the house or something um, Yeah, it kind of ate up my battery having to slow down so um, Just anytime you fly long range always give yourself plenty of headroom in case something goes wrong But you can see we're getting ready to approach seven miles here, so um, I think for now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna be quiet and let this battery finish off and then I'll get back to you guys um, after we're getting really low or after we surpass the uh, 12 mile mark if we do and it looks like we're going to. Hmm. I don't know if you guys heard that chicken or not but it just screeched. Alright guys so we've approached 12 miles and uh, you can see we're only at 3.2 volts um, so typically around here uh, is when my battery would start dropping off quite a bit um, it would probably be close to about 2.7 2.6 volts per cell and so far we're doing pretty good um, I don't really feel like I'm having to keep much more throttle uh, to keep it in the air so Yeah, and once it, once the cells get down to about 2.9, 2.8 volts per cell, that's when they really start to drop off quickly. Um, and usually I try and land at about 2.6, and I'm thinking I'll be able to squeeze about 15 miles out of this thing like this. Alright guys, so we just hit the 15 mile mark and we still have enough, we still have a little bit more battery left to squeeze just a little bit more flight time out of this thing. Um, there's some times that it feels like it's really bogged down and uh, there's other times where it feels just fine. So I'm just keeping it really low for this last uh, 
little bit. Um, I believe I'll be able to squeeze 16 miles out of it. And then I'm also going to keep it away from this pond um, just in case something happens if it decides to go down. Uh, I'm not going to fly over the pond like I have been. But you can see we still have um, just a few uh, just a few little volts to go. And uh, it's about here that the battery's really going to start dropping off quite a bit. And you can see we're approaching 16 miles. I think we're going to do it. You know, I think I'll push for 17 miles. Yeah, I'm going to push for 17. Let me just do a couple more little rounds here. Uh, I don't know if I can do it. I might be able to. Just barely. It's just barely dragging along. Yep, we're going to get it. Look here, 17 miles. Come on. All right. We reached 17 miles, guys. That's really impressive. So I'm going to go ahead and bring it in here. I guess I'll do a, a little hover in front of you guys just so you can look at it. Oh, yeah, this, this throttle feels really mushy. I don't know how well you guys can see it. Oh yeah. Let me go and stop that DVR recording. Alright, cool stuff guys. So you can see we flew for nearly 25 minutes I would say. And we got 17 miles out of it. And I think that is really, that's some really impressive numbers. Um, and see, um, on, a, on a warmer day, if, if you take the GoPro off and even made the quad a little bit lighter, because this, this quad is pretty heavy, the frame is really heavy. Um, oh, shoot. <laughs> I had the GoPro door open this whole time. I'm glad it wasn't raining or anything. Um, but this is pretty impressive for a quad, guys. Usually that's the kind of range you would get out of a plane. Um, and So, yeah, if you guys want to want to try this, um, I would recommend just kind of tuning it first to get out that little oscillation. The motors are cool though, but then again, it's also 30 degrees out here. And I also don't know if I'm supposed to mix a, a different size lithium ion batteries, but I've charged them together and they seemed like they did okay. Um, so yeah, let me know what you guys thought about this test. And, um, um, Again, I, th I think you might be able to reach 18 or 19 miles if you lighten the quad and on a warmer day with less wind or even if you flew into the wind um, just so you wouldn't have to use hardly any battery at all to get back. So I thank you guys for watching. And I hope you enjoyed it. So please like, subscribe, comment, and stay tuned for the next video. Bye.